Hello, beautiful humans. How are y'all doing? What's going on? Tell me everything. <laughs> Today is going to be a wild ride. I feel like I say that a lot, but honestly, we're reacting to people in multi-level marketing. Isn't it always kind of a wild ride? Just me? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Erin Bees. I am a wife, a mom, a military veteran a certified personal trainer to be and uh, spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing, healed my way out. And now I'm using all of my social media platforms to educate and raise awareness around the dangers of multi-level marketing companies and the tactics used by their reps. If you have not already, if you would like the stream, make sure that you're subscribed so you can get into this live chat because it's Friday and I know it's going to be a good time in there because, you know, they get a little wild. It is what it is. So hope you guys had a great day and uh, yeah, never stop learning. I won't. Did I study today? No. Did I do anything today? No. What Actually, what I did do was I stayed in my pajamas all day and um, I played some video games. That was what I did with my day. And you know what? It was time well spent playing NBA 2K24, but of course the WNBA version you know? Anyways. Oh, it's Saturday here. Well, happy Saturday. Love that. I'm going to watch and knit till I fall asleep. It's midnight in the UK. That sounds like an awesome plan. Yeah, it was a great day. So we need to talk about Lisa Grossman. You saw the thumbnail. You're probably like, who is this person? Maybe you've heard of Lisa Grossman. Well, Lisa Grossman is somebody that they, in multi-level marketing, network marketing, refer to her as the godmother of network marketing because she's been in for 30 plus years. She's been in multi-level marketing for like 30 some years. And she is a part of Prove It. This is Jesse Lee's former upline. I am going to assume that they're, and again, this is just my opinion, that they are moving teams around and, you know, things like that within Prove It. Uh, it has also been alleged to me that Lisa may have something to do with frequency. I've yet to see that because this is her talking about prove its ketones. So I don't know. I don't know. We shall see. But anyways, uh, Lisa Grossman. Uh, I already said that. She was Jesse Lee's former upline. Although I will tell you, she didn't really do a lot when I was in Prove It, when I was a part of the team. She started to ha to create her own Facebook group, and then she was asking some of the empire leaders to come in to the group and train the group. And I think these were people that she was recruiting or people on her team were recruiting, and it felt very chaotic. It felt very disconnected. It felt very much, in my opinion, like... I don't even know how I want to word that. Like an outdated strategy like she was trying to stay hip i don't know that's that's how it felt and uh i've been to many dinners with her spent some time with her and um i'm not saying this to be mean and then i'm going to run the disclaimer i have not forgotten everybody i'm not saying this to be mean this is genuinely in my opinion how she is kind of looked at. People listen out of respect, but they're not, they don't, she doesn't really say anything. You know, again, that's not me trying to be like disrespectful or anything like that. But my experience is when Lisa starts talking, yes, there's people around, but she doesn't really say anything. It's a bunch of word salad and I don't know. I don't know how else to describe that. Yeah. Yeah, this is this was Jesse Lee's upline. Yep. This was the person that she went to. Jesse Lee went to her house when she was fired from Modair. She flew to uh, from Utah to Dallas, where Lisa lives. All of that information is public information, by the way, and was coached by, in my opinion, Lisa and Curtis, Curtis Broom, 
who is who used to be over Prove It Asia, I believe, and no longer is, and allegedly inappropriate relationships or something. Not stating that as a fact, but that's what I I that's the information that's been shared with me from multiple people. So Curtis Broom, whom you see her with a lot, is not somebody, it, that's not her husband, that's her business partner. Lisa is actually married to somebody else. And uh, yeah, anyways, so Curtis Broom and Lisa Grossman are who Jesse Lee referred to as mom and dad. Do you guys remember that? That's who this individual is. Yeah. She doesn't seem to have a very dynamic personality. Yeah. She uh, has quite the interesting past. And anyways, this is her talking about prove it. And I think what I have shared with you before watching the video, I think it will kind of make sense as we go through the video. But first, let me run a disclaimer. I'll be right back. Okay. So, um, yeah, I remember her from a training talking about being a felon. Yep. And then a top leader. It was weird. And if I remember correctly, because Lisa told me the story herself, if I remember correctly, it was something to do with like tax evasion or tax fraud or something along those lines that she like took the fall for her family or something. I don't know how much of that is true. I do know that she is a felon. She did do time in, I think she said like a prison camp. I don't remember now, but anyways, she did jail time and that's part of her story that she shares. She is also friends with Eric Worry. They've known each other for many years. And I think that Lisa's role in multi-level marketing, yes, she's a distributor and prove it, but I think she does a lot of side deals, connects people to certain people. She's not very good on social media, in my opinion, which is fine. You know, that's that's all right. Not everybody is, you know, wants to be good at social media or whatever. And um, but I think that she, that's kind of her role behind the scenes. She gets on the phone and she's talking with people and texting people and and connecting them to this and that. And she keeps her thumb on the up and coming multi-level marketing companies, um, which is interesting. I wonder what her connection to Terry LaCour is because I don't remember, but uh, yeah. Yeah. How do I say this in not a rude way? Sometimes I feel like you see people that never would have made it to the top of an MLM on their own. They just got lucky recruiting that one rock star. I mean, yeah. Uh, Lisa Grossman's daughter is also in her downline in Prove It. And yeah. Yeah, like a matchmaker. Matchmaker, matchmaker. <laughs> yeah, like a matchmaker. So, um, yeah. Not something to brag about. I mean, I do think that people make mistakes and people can change Absolutely. But to be using that as part of your sob story to promote multi-level marketing, I think is, that's icky to me, I feel like. So I love Fiddler on the Roof. All right. So this video, I believe is like 39 minutes long or so. We're going to watch this and, you know, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me find the right, I think I want to do this one. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Prover Nation. The sound is terrible, by the way. As always. Um, how are you on this fine Saturday morning? If you are in my part of the country, you are coming out of the polar vortex. We called this week, I was telling people this week, I lived in Alaska here in Dallas, Texas. It was so cold. If you're in the Northeast, 
it's freezing cold, but wherever you are, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, Prove It morning. And I'm so excited to be here. So many of our friends and colleagues are down in the Bahamas. Honestly, I wish I was with them. I planned to be with them, but some things came up and I wasn't able to do that. But um, I'm here and able to be with you and I'm very excited. And I was talking with Natalie uh, via uh, WhatsApp last night when I said that I would be happy to come chat with all of you this morning. I think most of you, if you're watching this live, uh, put a one in the chat if you're watching. Oh my God. Natalie is Natalie Kilborn and she is the woman in my last Brian video, not the collab that I did with Clown Town, the one before that. And he was messing with her, but it was like uncomfortable. I don't know. Do you guys remember that? He was talking that she lived in the middle of nowhere and the Wi-Fi, you know, she doesn't have Wi-Fi and all that. She on replay, which I think a lot of people are yeah. going to be doing. Um, let us know it was replay. But it's a really exciting time at Prove It right now. Exciting things are happening. And February is just... Yes, she smokes heavily. Heavily. Oftentimes at these events, you will find her out with a group of smokers and she spends a lot of her time out there. So, yeah. It's got that, that oomph to it. I don't know if many of you felt this way, but January to me almost felt like the 13th <gasps> month of 20. Did Val and Gus raid us? You like how that rhymed? Hi Val and Gus. Thank you so much for the raid. That's so cool. Welcome everybody. It took me a while to get back into it, but so excited, you know, now that we are into February, you know, it's just exciting. So we've got a whole bunch of our leaders uh, down in the Bahamas on incentive trip. And I know that that's going to be all of us shortly on the next one. We have events coming up. Uh, and most importantly, we have our new IFAST program. We've had so many new people join our community uh, in the last six weeks many many as consumers of our product and many of you i mean lisa many many people have joined the prove it community in the last six weeks um i see the top recruiters and if you if you are in the top whatever and have recruited seven people there were guys just just for perspective when i was in prove it there were people that were signing 30 50 so, you know somewhere in there people a month now the top is seven people so maybe there are pe people still joining joining excuse me i don't know why they would be joining but maybe there are but she makes it sound like it's a whole lot and i don't think that that's the case lisa you who have decided to share the, co the conversation with others because everybody wants better. Everybody wants better. And our company is about the pursuit of better. Our product is about making it better every single day. The hearts were so cute. <laughs> also, I am very relaxed today. So if you enjoy my relaxed voice, today's live stream will be for you especially <laughs> thank you for this that's super kind of you so we have so many new people that are out there sharing the power of ketones the power of prove it the power of the prove it community and i wanted to come in here today and just kind of talk to uh, a lot of those people that are just starting out or a lot of us that are really found finding our stride and really moving into 2023 now with this intent to make it the best year ever. I believe that the next chapter can be, in fact, the best chapter. And I think that that's what we're all about. I think that's what brings us. She's speaking in Pinterest quotes. She's trying to motivate people to sling their ketones. Together. So there's this quote that Natalie always says at events that I love. And I want to start off with that. You might want to write it down. And it says, when we trade expectations for, for appreciation, the world becomes a better place. When we Not in a multi-level marketing company, it doesn't. When you are perpetually, in my opinion, scamming people.
you're supposed to trade being brought into something like this thinking that you're going to make money. And then when you don't, you're just supposed to, well, hey, I was expecting to make money, but let's change that for appreciation. I'm so grateful to be here. What? Gratitude doesn't pay people's bills. People weren't recruited into this company because they wanted to be with a community of other people that just want to be grateful every day. People are brought into these companies because they are told that they can make extra income, that they can retire their spouse, that they can leave their job, that single parents can, you know, buy what they need for their children, that they can pay their bills. And prove its own income disclosure statement does not show that. Not at all. Trade expectations for appreciation. The world becomes a better place. I don't know how old she is. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see what comes up. Just a minute. I'm not sure. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. Is this the same person? This can't be the same person. No. I'm not sure how old she is, you guys. Yeah, I'm not sure. Place. And that is really what Prove It is all about. And for people that say, you know, what do I do and how do I do it? How do I share this business? It can be very confusing because we have so much at Prove It. We have, we have a product that is literally hundreds of thousands of life changing. This is a newer video within the last couple weeks, I want to say, or something like that. Changing servings. All right, but oh, she said, I think the going into 2023 was a mistake. I could be wrong though. Out into the marketplace, lives are being changed and stories are being shared every single day about the power of ketones, about the power of bringing better into your life. We have so many people that have appreciated what it has done for them, that they've made a decision to share this life-saving, this life-changing technology. Life-saving technology? I mean, could we say, could I say, in my opinion, that I believe prove its ketones, prove its products could be life changing? I mean, I'm worried. I'm worried that it could, and not in a good way. Not in a good way at all, which is why I want to have another round of ketones tested for heavy metals. Are y'all, by the way, are y'all in for that? When I say you guys, I mean like the anti-MLM movement. There's a reason that I'm asking this. I want to get some of their newer products, which so many of you have already messaged me um, from my stories and, and different things. But I'd like to get Keto Kick. Well, let me back up. I already have access to Keto Kick, Keto Up. I can't remember if somebody has Keto Chill. I want to test the electrolytes, especially the new electrolytes that are upgraded, upgraded electrolytes. Um, and what was the other one? Oh, Radline. I want to test them for, oh, I'm not, I definitely will not be taste testing them. Oh no. But, um, I would really like to have them sent to the same lab I used last time and have them tested for heavy metals because there's something that I'm working on in the future that I will, I will need everybody's help. Um, it doesn't cost anything. The future thing I'm working on. So yeah, I definitely want to get all of that tested. So if you have Radline or any of those products, feel free to message me. But I think I already have Keto Up, Keto Kick. I need Keto Chill and the new electrolytes and possibly Radline. But yeah, let me know if you guys would be down to, to get them tested again because it, it definitely would be, I can't do it alone. You know what I mean? It would have to be all of us collectively. So maybe I can do some sort of uh where I, I donate my AdSense revenue for certain videos and maybe I can collaborate with some of the other creators. I know some of us have already kind of been talking about that um, in order to raise money to have all of those products tested. And then I'll make those available to everybody just like we did last time. Um, 
if you, this is my request. If you see people, because I do have a list of people that have had or currently have uh, cancer that were a part of Prove It. Now, am I saying that drinking ketones is going to cause that? No, no. For some reason, at the beginning of last year, I wanted to start tracking it because I started to notice a pattern. And, you know, it's, I'm not saying that, that Prove It's products are causing that. I just felt called, if you will, to track it. So if you know of somebody that, that has cancer and is working with their doctors, of course, doctor, doctors, of course, and you feel like it might be important for them to have the lab results, I posted it everywhere. It is on my community tab here on YouTube. I shared it in my stories. It's up on my Instagram, so you can easily find that. And my request, if you feel comfortable, is if you know of somebody that has cancer that was drinking ketones, if you can just maybe kindly message them if you feel comfortable again and sending the lab results to them so that they can take it to their doctor. Could it be significant? Sure. Could it be not related? Absolutely. But I would rather have people equipped with that information so that they can do with it what they feel they need to. So again, I'm not saying that prove it, ke prove its ketones cause any of this. I'm just saying, you know, if you would help me pass the information along, I think that that would be helpful, please. And thank you. And again, only if you feel comfortable, I'm not asking you to like spam people and message them. If you don't feel comfortable, that's totally fine. If you want to just share it in your stories or whatever, that's fine too. And if you're just here quietly watching, that's okay too. Becca, a member for six months. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. This life-changing community, this mission, this vision, this movement. Correct, yeah. About taking better around the world. And we have, you know, specialists and events that are unparalleled, covering so many different topics. And we have proven um, specialists that do calls every single Wednesday. And we have Freebie Friday. And we have incredible... Uh, products and support products and we have iFast and we have uh... Betsy thank you so much for the super chat I appreciate you I can work on getting a hold of those flavors if you need me to that would be incredible if you would and please if you would just message me on Instagram that would be awesome appreciate it thank you so much oh Shelby almost a year that's exciting thank you for being a member uh, you know instructionals on how to post and we have calls like this one and we have you know, uh, state of play calls and calls to introduce the community, the product to, to, to new people to get that information out to them. And sometimes we look at it and we're like, oh my gosh, there's so much, what do I do? And I gotta tell you, that's what I wanna talk about today. Because what we do is really very simple. What you do is really very simple and you were born yeah, knowing how to do it. Because the purpose of all of this stuff that I've talked about uh, that can be in Wendy, thank you so much for the gifted membership. I appreciate it. Who got it? I don't have my YouTube pulled up here. Let me know who got it, but this is for you. That is such a vibe. <laughs> thank you so much for the gifted membership. That's awesome. And welcome to the new member. Julie got it. Yay, Julie. Two years almost? Time flies when we're having fun, right, Lushy? <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> oh, that's cool that Julie got it. That's awesome. Intimidating should instead be empowering because what it is saying to you is I don't need to understand the science and the mechanics of this product. There's proveit.tv. There's all of these specialists with this. Specialists, yeah. Um, the doctors who are not. MDs. So that's interesting. Um, also, I feel like if you're going to say, well, you know, we don't need to know what's going on. We don't need to know all of the, all of the things. I think that the ingredients mm -hmm. that, that should not be a proprietary blend 
along with people being aware that there are reports of some form of lead contamination, allegedly, that go all the way back to 2017, heavy metal contamination, I should say, they go all the way back to 2017 with Terry LaCour's businesses, his warehouse, his lab, however you want to word that. I feel like that would be important to the consumer to know that ahead of time. You know? Incredible. You know, plethora hey, of degrees and training and credibility and knowledge that I can tap into. I don't have to understand how this compensation structure works if someone asks because it's all there for me. There are videos, there are PDF sheets in your back office. You know, I just remembered that I have their video on their new compensation plan and the changes that they've made. I need to actually react to that too. Mental note. Okay. You can expand uh, the back office and it will tell you exactly what is required for every rank advancement, for everything. And it can all be broken down to this very simple thing of what we do. And what we do is we have conversations. Hey, Heather. We have conversations with other people where we share our story, where our story we're storytellers, where we get their story, where we connect with them to find out what their challenges, problems might be, and we connect them then. To you, you can't, listen, I'm taking my slides off. It's getting serious. You can't, you shouldn't sell a product based off of a sob story. If the ingredients were so great, they wouldn't hide behind a proprietary blend. If the ingredients were so great, well, one, it wouldn't be a multi-level marketing company. Um, this, I just, the saying that they, that they use facts, tell stories, sell is a phrase to get people to accept that in order to get people to buy in on this product or to join this MLM company, you have to emotionally manipulate your audience. If the products were that good, they would lead with the products. They wouldn't lead with sob stories. There wouldn't be people like Eric Worre saying, listen, facts tell, stories sell, tell your story. Here's four parts to telling your story. It would be, hey, learn your products, understand what the products are, know the ingredients, you know, and you wouldn't, you, you can't and you shouldn't because the FTC is like, uh, we don't like that. When there are health claims that you're, you know, trying, that you're putting out there to try to cure other people. You can't do that when there's challenges or what did she say? Problems or hate it, hate it, hate, 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 hate. The information that can provide a solution. And the simplest place we start with that is our amazing product. When we go out and share, and that starts with your story. So on all of you go back to last week or five years ago, like you're me, that okay so the the other night the yesterday yesterday uh some of the members and i were previewing this and which is something that i do a lot if you're not a member and you'd like more behind the scenes stuff and you'd like to financially support me my channel all of that stuff please don't feel compelled to do that but if you would like to and if you are able to uh, you can become a member and I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff. We preview stuff and it's a lot of fun. Sometimes we have working <laughs> type uh, streams where we're just chatting and working on whatever it is that, that neat we want to work on or, you know, just saying hello. Anyways, um, we were watching this and there were so many people that said that that looks like a specimen cup from a lab that has urine. In it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for last month or whenever it was and you were introduced to this however that was you know i mean that looks like somebody that's very well hydrated good on you also have you guys had any water today a power hour stream <laughs> if you were looking for better if your expectation was better and you're drinking ketones consistently ask yourself this am i better with them am i getting better what has it done for me? How are my days better? What is better worth to me? What might it be worth to someone else? So we have, we always call it the play that works. What's oh the God. play that works? What do you know? 
about what do you know about ketonad and ketosis? Yeah. Ketones and ketosis. Are you currently or have you ever drank ketones on a consistent basis? Are you interested in better days? better nights, better sleep, better skin, better cognition, better whatever is for you. What's other than fat loss? Better sleep and better energy. How does that work? Physiologically, how does that work in the body? Better better sleep and better energy? Okay. <laughs> this incredible fuel, what is the number one thing that ketones have done for you? Are you a lifer? Because ultimately... <laughs> what? <laughs> It's giving Monet. It's giving, I'm a Monet lifer. It, it's giving, you are in a commercial cult, call your dad. Oh my God. Are you a lifer? I can only imagine all the comments on this. Like, yeah, I'm totally in it for the long haul. I'm a lifer. I'm, I, I, I was meant to do this. God brought me to the, stop it with the spiritual manipulation. First of all, knock it off. Not cute. <laughs> The community, the core community, if you take everything else away oh, no. from Prover, from ba from Prover who started yesterday to legend, we are all of us lifers. You can't take my ketones away from me. I won't go a day without them. I, I mean, you can have them. I don't want them. We don't want them. Rebecca B, member for 13 months. Thank you so much. Hi, babe. Hello. What are you doing? Sure. Can yeah. I have a uh, Dr. Pepper Zero? Yeah. Thank you. This is, I mean, this right here. This right here. Yeah. I always tell people, and I want you to ask yourself this. You know, people are like, what do you do um, every single day? And you know what? Every single day, there are only two things that I can guarantee you I've done every single day. Every You have eaten every single day, I hope, unless you're doing the keto reboot. That's going without food for 60 hours, but they're not supposed to call it a fast. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go to the bathroom every day, hopefully. What else do you do every day? Hopefully you shower every day, you know? Put deodorant on, brush your teeth. Hopefully you do all these things that I just listed every day. <laughs> single day, I brush my teeth twice a day. Every single day, I drink ketones a minimum of twice a day. I wash my hair most days, some days I don't. Love that. I get out of my pajamas most days, some days I don't. Love that too. You know, I leave the house most days, some days I don't. But every day, Fair. I brush my teeth twice a day. And I drink my ketones twice a day because my day is better when I do those two things. Okay. It's part of my routine. So right now in the chat, are you a lifer? Are you a lifer on the product? Regardless of the opportunity, we, are you going to drink ketones? No matter. Guys, are you a lifer? Are you lifers? <laughs> Let me know in the, in the comments. No matter what, if somebody took them away, would you move heaven and earth to find them? Because if the answer is yes, you have everything you need to build a spectacular community, a spectacular business, to change your life in whatever way you want to, to whatever degree you do, and to and, and the lives of the people you know, love, and care about, and the ability to share with others. How That's it. I'm going to make anti-MLM lifer merch. Mm -hmm. How to do the same thing. Because that's really what it's about. It's about finding the need and meeting the need. And today, everybody. I love wants a good nap. Help. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk. I want to talk about how you define better because this is a word that this company uses a lot. One percent better every day. <laughs> Are you pursuing better today? What? How do you define that? Because I feel like every. I just feel like that's so hard to define because it's going to be different for everybody. And so if you're saying, oh, well, you know, we're 1% better every day. We drink ketones, so we're better every single day. And it's like, 
It just doesn't make any sense to me. And maybe that's because I am fully removed from this commercial cult now, which I do think it's a commercial cult in my opinion. But it just, it seems like it's a vague word that they use to manipulate their people to do what they want them to do. Oh, well, you want to be better in your business? Make sure you show up to the Zooms. You want to be better every day? Make sure you're a product of the product. You want to get better in your whatever? Uh, make sure you get to the next event. You know, make sure that you're buying new products. Make sure you're doing a keto reboot, a 60 hour fast every single month. Make sure that you're doing all of this stuff because you've got, you know, you got to be better. And it's like, it's so manipulative. Talk about your story. What were you, where were you at? And you can write this down, take some notes for yourself or share it in the chat if you want to. Where were you at before Prove It and before Ketones? Let's start with ketones. Before I started taking ketones, I felt like, and since I've taken ketones. Oh my God, this is a botched version of her trying to teach people how to tell their story. Brandy, I know you're in the chat. How many times have we heard this at Eric Worry events and anybody else that has attended his events? There's four parts to telling a story. What was your life like before? Come on. Also write this down. I feel like before taking ketones, I noticed this and this and this. And since I've taken them, I've noticed this and this and this. That's your ketone story. You know, I started drinking ketones. I've been drinking them for X and I'll never drink. I'll never not drink them again because that's your ketone. I mean, in my opinion, nobody should be drinking ketones, but especially I will say the three that I had tested, thanks to the help of many of you and the anti MLM movement, you know, I have said this before, but I am concerned about the accumulation. You know, when I was in Prove It, we were drinking two to three products a day unless we were at an event or unless we were doing a reboot, we were drinking a lot more ketones a day just to get through the day. My concern is the amount of products that these people are taking in on a daily basis, knowing they come from the same warehouse. Now, can I say that all of the, the Prove It products have heavy metals in them? No, I haven't had all the products tested and that would be false for me to say that. I will say that I have had three of the products tested that came back with small amounts of heavy metals. And because of the amount of products that these promoters and the customers are drinking on a daily basis, that has me concerned. That's all I'll say about that, which is why I want to make sure that I, I get more products tested. Ketone story. That's what you're looking to share with other people. Now prove it. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Before I decided to, cre to create um, an opportunity for myself to build, a, to build a business with Prove It, whatever that means to you, I was looking for what I need, the need that wasn't being met in my life was. And since Prove It, um, this is what... Drinking ketones is not going to meet something that needed to be met in your life. It's an energy drink. It's not that serious. I mean, it is because it's a proprietary blend. But as far as the claims that they make, it's going to change your life. No, it's, it's just an energy drink with a ton of vitamin B6 and B12. Like 4,000 4, uh, percent of the daily recommended value of B12, if I remember correctly. Of course, you're going to have energy. You're also going to pee that all out. So love that. What's happened to me? List four things. One, two, three, four. Thank you, Katie. You know, for me, um, prior to prove it, I was feeling, and, and well, obviously I've told you my ketone story, but I'll start there. Ketones have been life-changing for me. I will be 61 next month, and I literally feel better on a consistent basis than I did certainly in my 50s and for the most part in my 40s my energy level is it's not spiking it is if it was here it's here now i sleep better if it was here it's here now <laughs> science 
I look better. My thought, you know, yes, she I don't have brain fog. My I, the clarity, the mental clarity is amazing. My mood is better. I like that my mood is better. My family loves that my mood is better. Did she say her age? Did I miss that? Is better. That's my ketone story. Before Prove It, I was 55 years old, had been very successful in my career. Um, but I career. really thought, as far as building a business, going out and sharing a story uh, that could help people change their lives, was I thought my best days were behind me. I really did. I felt a bit like a dinosaur. I still feel like a dinosaur. Techno idiot on social media here and can still build a business. But since Prove It, I feel alive again. It has given me purpose and direction. It has obviously been life changing in a financial way. It has given me the power to help other people change their circumstances, which is the world to me. And the very best thing for me are the relationships, the authentic and real relationships that being a part of something important, a part of something that is doing something great. has. The real authentic relationships, as long as you keep the smart ship going, as long as you're ordering the products, as long as you have your camera on on the Zooms, as long as you are going to the events, we're family. The second you're like, oh, I don't like that. I don't, that doesn't sound right. Oh, you're questioning what's going on here. We can't be having that, which is a, an aspect of high control groups. It is what high control groups. Do I think Prove It is a high control group? Absolutely, I do. Yeah, absolutely, I do. So it's just interesting hearing, you know, real authentic relationships. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say that. We're, I'm just going to hit play. Brought into my life. That's my story. That is what mm. I share every single day. I very rarely am sharing, you know, what the comp plan is or things like that. I'm certainly helping people around uh, my business and around the Prove It community at large with understanding certain things. But really, the majority of my job is pointing, guiding, and directing people to get their to get the information they need to do better today, better tomorrow, help other people do better. That's all you really have to do from the what do I do state. Point, guide, and direct. Someone's interested in drinking ketones, we have the Drink Ketones Daily Group. Your teams have various groups. Somebody wants to find out more, we have a learn page that shares with them all about ketones and helps them decide you know, what's best for them. You are. A First of all, why are you teaching people about prove it's ketones? If you're not even disclosing the ingredients. I, I'm just saying. Guy, you're that's you're a friend and you're a guy, but you don't have to be a brainiac or know everything. I'm here five and a half years. and I try to not know or specifically understand. Yes, but know what I can guide understand yes but no i try not to understand what <laughs> somebody to someone else too you know when i guide somebody to one of the amazing videos done by dustin or katie or jesse lee um i know what that video says every single time i know that it's always going to work 24 hours a day it's never going to be having a bad day i know exactly what people are going to see I've seen it myself, so I can discuss it with them and point, guide, and direct them to the next thing. So I want you to take all the pressure off, and let's talk about what we really can do uniquely. This is a great question. The last that I checked on his link tree or whatever it is on his social media, he does, what's going on out there? He does still have ketones listed, which I think is atrocious. But that, in my opinion, well, I shouldn't say in my opinion, it's been alleged to me that Michael Rutherford and his wife, they were going after big influencers on TikTok through his, through his wife, I believe. Wife, girl, no, it's his wife, right? Also, why is Michael Rutherford on Prove It Zooms all of a sudden? Didn't he just sue Prove It this, sum this past summer? And he's on there drinking keto up. That's weird. How does that work? Michael Rutherford, what's going on? Did you get your position back? Did you get paid? Did you pay Brian for that little side deal situation, allegedly? You know, where you, you had to pay him 50% of your downline check. Did y'all work it out?
y'all bros again cool cool that's sarcasm by the way that makes a difference because what i want to share with you i have in i've been in the space this wonderful direct spelling space which by the way community-based marketing is next level we are on the cutting edge of everything we do you can look at other things and look for similarity just to see how different proof it is but don't look for this model this community this way of doing business anywhere else lisa don't look for this model you mean the mlm model that's in other companies like what because we are leaders in the marketplace we are star trekkers it didn't exist it was i would like to formally apologize to anybody that is a fan of star trek that she is saying prove it is like star trekkers that they're like star trek i apologize because i know how insulting that is <laughs> when i was a kid my dad used to watch star trek when it would come on tv and nobody could talk when it came on he'd be like shh be quiet we'd have to sit there and watch it <laughs> It was serious. It was serious in my house. <laughs> created through the efforts of everyone involved. And it is constantly striving for better and morphing toward better every single day. And the only way to fully understand it is if you're a part of it because there's nothing else like it. That's uh, yes. The only way to understand it is if you are a part of this cult, this commercial cult. Yeah, that checks out, Lisa. You know, it's a good thing I was a part of it so that I can talk about it and share the information. So love that for us, obviously. And, and that's what I always tell people about ketones. When they ask me, I point guy and direct them to, you know, what do you know about ketones and ketosis? You know, more often than not, and raise your hand if this is true, people will say, well, isn't it about that diet? No, we're about the drink, not the diet. It's not about... But... Prove it put out keto meals and the majority of distributors that are that have large teams that are recruiting people that have customers because they're at the top of the pyramid. The part of their brand is being keto. So if it's drink versus diet, why are there so many people building their brand off of keto? They're baiting and switching their audience, people that are interested in following the keto diet for whatever reason. And you're baiting and switching them. Well, you don't have to do the keto diet. You can just drink ketones and get into nutritional ketosis, except that that's not how physiology works within the body. About the diet, it's about the ketones and what ketones do for your body. And I get them like this. And drinking this helps my body to make them too, because it helps me to make changes. I mean, does it help your body though, Lisa? Does it really? Because... I think it would be important to know exactly what is in the products before I would make the claim that it helps my body because I'm just seeing a pattern. I'm concerned, you know, we're going to test some other things moving forward. We're going to get a little bit louder about this as a movement. I mean, if y'all are willing to help me with that, that would be amazing. But, and, but if people want stories, I can point them to one story after another, after another, after another. You want science? We have more science than Wrigley's has chewing gum. Let me take you to Keto One. We have more science than Wrigley's has chewing gum? Mm-mm. Bombastic side eye. No. No one. Let me give you the opportunity through learning on Friday to earn free ketones from one of our specialists to learn more. Let me- Specialists. She's talking about Dr. Lowry. She's talking about Dr. Jacob Wilson. She's talking about all of these people. And you know, what's interesting is Prove It at their events brings in all of these, you know, medical professionals. And they typically are talking about the, about, uh, the keto diet. They're not talking about ketones. It's like they're trying to use science and the studies that are happening on the keto diet and the effects on the brain. I remember Dr. Ken Ford talking about this and the importance of protein as we age and different things like that. And they're trying to make it be the same benefits. Like, for example, we know, you know, 
uh, it's important for us to take in more protein as we age. It's important for us to lift weights to help with bone density and to preserve muscle mass as we age. It's important for, you know, just functioning as we get older, those types of things. And so I feel like knowing that, which that is, has been proven that scientifically, uh, that they would take that statement, that scientific data, and then they would say, oh, see, and this is why we need to drink keto uh, or prove it protons that has six grams of protein in it. That's not a protein shake. You're better off eating a piece of chicken or whatever protein source you prefer. You're better off doing that than drinking keto or the protons. Prove it's protons. You know, so it's it's so interesting to me to have this experience at these events, listening to all this science going, wow, that's really cool because I, I enjoy science. I enjoy learning like a lot of us. And remembering how they would be using that to say, see, you want to get into ketosis. So you drink keto nat, you drink keto up, you drink keto kick, you know, and, and you're going to get into nutritional ketosis and it's going to help with some of this because science and it's like, but that science was not based on prove it's ketones. Also, why is Kelsey Ray breaking out in hives when she drinks keto chill at night to the point where she's having to take Benadryl at night so she doesn't wake up with hives? Um, Kelsey Ray, maybe, maybe lay off the ketones, just in my opinion. I don't know. Take point you to prove it.tv. But in the end, no matter what I tell you, you might experience, no matter what anybody else tells you they've experienced, none of it compares to what you're going to share with me. Once you've experienced it for yourself, we build through experience. Our goal is to create the best possible experience for everybody involved from the minute they hear the word prove it. And however they choose to be involved in our community, to make sure the experience is a good one and for them to always understand there's always a next step if you want to take it. We're about the pursuit of better, no matter where you are. You can be the top earner. You can be the person who has the most knowledge, the person who eats the best and lives the cleanest and, and most admirable life in terms of their discipline. And there's always a next step. There's always a next step to better. And that's what we're about. So our job is to go out and hear other people's stories and then connect them to stories they can relate to and be inspired by and authoritative voices that they can trust and believe that's, that help them to understand the power and then to help them create an experience. And for me, and I've talked about this before, I've always used three questions and I use the same questions whether I'm talking about the product or the business. But I like to talk to people about the business and to stack the deck in my favor. I feel like end the live. <laughs> she just said the quiet part out loud. Yes, we know. We know, Lisa, that recruiting people is going to pay you more in multiple marketing. But I, I love that you're telling other promoters that. That's sarcasm, by the way. Wow. The quiet parts, the quiet part out loud. Loud. And what I mean by that is a person who's loving ketones has a much different viewpoint about everything involved than a person who's never experienced them. So I usually start with trying to get people to experience. And when we do that, we have uh, trials and we have variety packs and we have the good, better, best. And now we have the better page. And there are so many ways to guide people there. So what's our job? To find the person that's never heard about any of it and connect them to the, to the information and the people that can share more with them about it. I Like I started to say, I've been in this space a long time. I've probably interviewed as many people that are seven figure earners as anybody in and out of network marketing. And here's what successful people have in common. They are always trying to spend more time doing the thing that only they can do. They try to automate, delegate, or eliminate everything they can, leverage everything they can. We've been talking about leverage up until now. Leverage is the word that they are using for recruiting and having a team so that they can spend more time doing the thing that only they can do. 
And what is the only thing you can do? Nobody can tell your story like you. And nobody can connect with that one-on-one -on -one person the way that you can. Your interaction with people that you know, that know, love, and care about you, people that trust you, people that believe that you put them first, that you see them. That people that believe that you put them first and that you see them. I feel like, and maybe I'm looking too much into this, but that phrase to me is like, do you actually believe in them? Do you actually see them? Or are you just saying that to be able to manipulate them? Because for some reason, when she said that phrase, I was like, mm, don't like that. Nope. That they matter, that you are listening, that you care about their story. Nobody can do that with the people that you are connected to and connecting to as well as you can. You are unique. So you want to spend as much time as you can in those conversations. And for me, the guideline for those conversations has always been three questions. And here's how they go. And I'll, I've done it before and I do have them typed up so I can get them into, you know, into the group or to Natalie. But number one, we're going out to have conversations with people. And I want you to imagine that everybody that you talk to in the world today is carrying around a bucket an invisible bucket that only you can see. And what that bucket says is my stuff. And it is filled with stuff. It is filled with life's disappointments. It is filled with all the things that didn't work out. It is filled with the, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a mom, I work a job, I'm a wife, I'm a cook. There's no time for me. It is filled with, I gotta, I just, I can't even get through the day. There's so much stuff. Okay, and you might have the cure for what is ailing them. You have a product that can perhaps make their days so much better that dealing with that stuff is becomes much easier. You have an opportunity where they can, you know, maybe it's grandma and she wants an extra three to five hundred dollars a month. Leave grandma alone. Leave grandma alone now to buy presents for the grandchildren and not tell grandpa about it because he doesn't like it. You've got that solution. But their bucket is so full, so full, that it can't take anything more in. So the first job we have is to help people get some space in the bucket. And we do that by being interested in them. So the first question is, are you happy? And when we ask people if they're happy. That's none of your business, Lisa. It's none of your business. You're meeting somebody, whether it's in person or online, and you're going to ask if they're happy. That is none of your business. Happy. And think about this. People ask you every day, what do you do? Are you married? Do you have kids? Where'd you go to school? What did you have for dinner last night? Where are you going on vacation? People never ask us if we are happy. So already you are separating yourself out from everybody else in their life that maybe they feel is meeting them every day with expectations and no appreciation, that maybe they feel they're, they can't keep up or they're letting down or it is draining them. You are the difference. You are making the difference because you are the difference. You're the game changer today. Oh are my you God. Happy? And we're not asking people, did you have a zippity doodah kind of day, a cotton candy day? They're not six. And we want to put this in your words. What we're asking people is, the road you're on, when you look down the road, if nothing changes in the next six months, six weeks, year, five years, is it taking you to a place where you're happy? Do you like the destination? Do you like where you're going? Now, what do you think that most people say when they hear that? What do you think? I think most people, when they get a message from somebody that they don't know or somebody out in public starts asking them things like this that they've never met, it makes people uncomfortable. I think it's out of line. I think it's crossing the line. I think it's it's not appropriate. And I think the only reason these questions are being asked is not to better somebody's life. It's to sell them an overpriced product that is attached to crazy health claims, in my opinion, or to recruit them into a business where the the median, the average, average or median, I don't remember, was under $11 for the year in 2022. The only reason these questions are being asked is not to make you look like a good person, not because you genuinely 
care about the person, you genuinely believe in the person, or you genuinely see the person, it's because you're trying to financially capitalize on that person buying ketones or joining your team so that you can make money off of their efforts if they do get customers. But they're going to make that initial purchase, so you're going to get paid off of it, right, Lisa? That's disgusting. Leave people alone. They say, believe it or not. Most people, if they're to be honest at all, and they will be if you're actually interested in them and you're focused on that, not the agenda of getting them to try ketones this minute or join your business, but just in that moment. It's almost like I just said that. It's almost like I just said the only reason you're asking is because you want them to get ketones, buy ketones, or join the team. It's almost like I just said that. Yeah. Crazy. Most people will tell you, eh, not so much. If you meet somebody who's really, really, really happy, share ketones with them, of course, and let them go. There aren't that many, especially today. When somebody says they're not happy, the next question that we're going to ask them, and again, in your own words. Don't do it, Lisa. If somebody happens to tell you that they're not happy and you don't know them personally, maybe suggest them talking to somebody that they know and trust. Maybe that is their their spouse or a friend or a family member or a therapist. Somebody that can help them walk through that or guide them to somebody that can help them walk through that versus trying to be this good person, connecting people to, hey, drink ketones and you'll be happy. That's not how it works. And that's a health claim on its own. So it's weird that Lisa is teaching these promoters and prove it, you know, hey, we're going to start. We're going to ask people if they're happy because it makes them feel like they're seen. It makes them feel like we believe in them and we do want them to be happy and that, you know, ketones are the way to do that. The community is the way to do that. And that's just not the case. And it's not an interrogation. It's a conversation. These are just three points you want to guide the conversation toward is do you have a plan? And most people would just say, what do you mean? Well, because it's none of your business. Well, what is your plan to make more money? Well, what is your plan for X, Y, and Z? What is your plan for your health? None of your business. You just told me that you're not really happy. If nothing changes on the road you're on, you don't really love oh, it. I hope you find it. Do you have a plan to change it? And you know what most people say? No. No. You're not asking that they have a plan because you think they have a plan and you want to have them share their plan with you. If they had a plan, they'd be working their plan. They wouldn't be talking. Maybe they are working their plan. Maybe they're just not disclosing that to you because, again, it's none of your business. Maybe they're making moves quietly and not telling anybody because it's none of anybody else's business. Weird how that happens, right? You about the unhappiness, the lack of fulfillment, the lack of satisfaction, the angst in their life. What you're doing for them is helping them do what most people never do anymore. That you're connecting them to two things. I'm not all that happy and I have no plan to change it. You would be surprised when people get caught up in the day, how often, how long they can go through life and never connect those two things. So when they don't have a plan, the next thing you're going to say to them is, would you like to see one? I'm so sorry, Would you Cindy. you like to see one? You have a plan. It may not be the plan for them, but it's a plan and they don't have one. They don't have one. Let me guess. Prove it's the plan for people to be happy, to be connected to community in case they're lonely, for uh, a way for people to make extra income if they're struggling financially, except no, that's not the plan. That actually is going to make things worse, in my opinion, for people. So the next line is, would you like to see one followed by, it may not be for you, mm. but yeah, I'm sure you're going to adore the product and will want to try that. Almost everybody does. Imagine telling somebody, hey, I'm unhappy and them saying, well, I have something. It may not be for you, but I think you might adore the product. But don't be all about sales. You know, don't be just about this person buying ketones or joining the team. You know, be about the person. You want to make sure that they're happy. Unbelievable, manipulative, gross 
Do not like it. Do not suggest it. Also, can you imagine getting a message from somebody like, hey, you know, just just found your profile. Love what you're doing. You know, uh, are you happy? Or let me ask you a question. Are you happy? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> or if they've already experienced the product, but we already know that you love the product. So what? So who knows? So it may not be for you. Why do we say that? Because it may not be for them. And we have to accept the fact that, well, I never say, every time I say always and never, I'm made a fool of. So let's say we all believe that we know in our hearts, I believe that 98% of the people that the ketones on a daily basis is going to make their life better. Not perfect, not fix their problems, but make. But you're pitching this like it's going to fix people's problems whether they are unhappy or they want to fix things, whatever those things are, and they don't have a plan, you're in a way suggesting that this is the way for them to fix all of that. And it's not. You're contradicting yourself in this same training multiple times, Lisa. Get better. The days will be better. But as far as business goes, it's not for everybody and that's okay. But nobody knows until they know. And you can't know until you experience or investigate. So it may not be. You don't know what you don't know. Uh, exactly, genius. <laughs> if you don't know it, you don't know it. Like, what is that? Brian says that all the time and it drives me nuts because you don't know what you don't know. Well, go out there and learn it. I, I, I just, I hate that phrase so much. For you, although I'm sure you're going to love the product or you love the product, but if you see a glimmer of what I see. I think together, you and I and this wonderful community that I'm a part of, these people that when Sounds I met like a cult. them and they showed me what they showed me, I knew I was going to be able to change my life. That together, maybe we can help you get some of the peace that you're looking for, get some of the change in your life that you're looking for, um, do some of the things for your family that you're not able to do right now that you say you want to do. And if not, okay, you'll be better off because you've got ketones and you'll keep looking till you find the plan that's right for you because you deserve to be happy. Everyone does. And most people, when you let them know that it's really about them, see, it's not about you, it's about them. Lisa. Stop it. It's not about you. It's about them. But you're supposed to reach out to them and ask if they're happy because you have the solution. Which is actually part of the the script, if you will, that Eric Worre gives or the framework, if you will, that Eric Worre gives for telling your story. I found a solution. Yeah. So that's what you're loosely following here, which is manipulative. All of it. When you made your decision, that was your decision. From this point forward, every conversation you have is about the person in front of you. And you want to treat them with respect and you want to respect whatever decision they make. You just want to make sure that A, you know what's going on with them, that they understand that you care, that you're there to help and support, irregardless of what they ultimately decide to do. And you want, because you want them to make informed decisions. And the only way they're going to allow, get the information. Lisa, but you can't make informed decisions about prove it. If you don't have all of the information, if you don't have exactly what is in it, if you don't have the information that allegedly it's being produced in a lab that has a history of containing small amounts of heavy metal, if you aren't made aware of the, the income disclosure statement saying that most people in 2022, the average or the median, I don't remember which, you know, made under $11 for the year, that doesn't even cover the promoter fee. That doesn't even cover ordering one box of ketones. They are literally paying in to be a part of this company. So you can sit here and tell the promoter, pr promoter, promoters, promoters. Yeah, that happened. Anyways, let's rewind that back. <laughs> You can tell the promoters, hey, you know, 
care about people, reach out to them, ask if they're happy. But at the end of the day, this is just manipulation. And if people don't have all of the information, they can't make an informed decision, period. Is if you connect, point, guide, and direct them to it. And they're more likely to do that if there's a, if you built up a level of trust. Business builds at the speed of trust. And people... Did she say irregardless? That's kind of funny. <laughs> People only trust you when they believe that you see them and they matter. People only want to follow you when they know that even if they don't, you're not going to hold it against them. Mm, why don't you tell the promoters in the company and people in MLM in general that when somebody says no thank you, that they don't have to unfriend and block them. Because that's gross. That's telling the person that they just sent the friend request or the follow request or whatever that, hey, I was only interested in connecting with you online if you were interested in my product or this opportunity. So go ahead and maybe tell the industry that. Next time you're on stage at Eric Rory's event, maybe you should cover that, Lisa. Maybe you should tell them, hey, we're doing this the wrong way. We can do this better. Also, that's sarcasm. That's how true relationships and big businesses are built. Because again, business builds at the speed of trust. Don't let anybody, you can make a sale, you can make it. I mean, and if you're going to trust somebody, that means that you're disclosing everything. Prove it's not disclosing everything. We know that. We know that. The side deals that Brian allegedly has, well, it was in the lawsuit, right, with Michael Rutherford. The side deals, uh, the moving around allegedly, the downlines to suit him in his distributor position that he has, again, allegedly, improve it, you know, amongst many other atrocities that has been alleged to me that I won't mention here. We'll save that for another time. But, you know, trust requires information to be disclosed so that people can make an informed decision. So, that's weird, Lisa. It's all about the ketones, and they are an incredible tool. <laughs> they are a tool for living. They are the gasoline that propels the vehicle of the community that we are building to make the world a better mm, place. That sounds like a cult. No, thank you. But a buyer is not a trusted relationship. And for someone to lock arms with you and be vulnerable enough to go out and face a world that is committed to mediocre when you've elected to break a part of a world that is committed to better is no easy task. And you know what's mediocre? Your income disclosure statement. Uh, yeah. You know what's mediocre? Thinking that being in Prove It is a business. That's mediocre. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And people are only going to do that when they trust the people. They do indeed. Running. So it's, so that is the frame of mind and none of that requires a degree or that you can explain the comp plan in 37 different languages all of it requires that you first remember that you are a human and the most important thing you bring to the equation <laughs> is your ability to if you guys want to have some fun in the live chat <laughs> type in the comment what do you think is mediocre about multi-level marketing companies? <laughs> Connect and be human with other humans and that they are human. And to know that there is no question they have, no piece of information, no tactic they are seeking to understand or deploy in their business that you do not have access to within this community that you cannot point, guide, and direct them to. So there's no pressure there. <laughs> there's no pressure there. I don't need to know how to fire. I don't need to know how to build a fire like my ancestors did to cook dinner because I have a stove and I know how to. Hey, Lisa, what you're doing here is called a false equivalence fallacy because building a fire like our ancestors did and comparing it to having modern technology in the kitchen these days. Um, you're, you're trying to say that that's how this business is or how ketones are. Those are not the same things. That's a, that's a false equivalence fallacy. So, um, oh my God, Hannah. <laughs> oh, indeed, indeed. MLM products are mediocre. Mediocre is a compliment. How to scam people when you don't understand the con you are working for. That part. That part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
to turn it on. I don't have to know how they built the stove because I know how to turn it Indeed. on. I don't know have to, I don't have to understand all the science behind ketones because I know how to turn on Dr. Jacob and Dr. Ryan and Dr. Andy. I don't um, have to know exactly how to. Pretty sure Dr. Andy is a, a naturopathic practitioner. If I remember correctly, I haven't I haven't thought about that name in a long time. Explain to people the process for changing their way of thinking because I know how to turn on Mitch Newman and I know how to turn on, you know, Brian and I know how to turn on Katie and I know how to turn on you. If you've shared your story in the drink ketone story uh, and the drink ketones group, I know how to turn you on. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> if you've shared your story on your profile, I know how to turn you on. If you haven't, why haven't you? Do that. Only you can tell your story the way you can tell your story. And you may not think you're a fabulous storyteller, but nobody tells your story like you because it's your story. Mm. Other people will be able to leverage your story if you are willing to be generous enough to share it and inspire others to do the same. You see, when one person does something, people think it's a fluke. When two people say it, do it maybe. When three people do it, it's like, well, they can do it and I can't. But when people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all educational, all ages, are all sharing stories of how ketones have changed their life, are all sharing stories about how this opportunity, this community has changed their lives, not only financially, but in so many other ways, people begin to realize since we're sharing stories, I find it fascinating that they want you to sell or they want you to tell stories, share your stories when you're in multi-level marketing. But when you get out and you have experience, firsthand experience, such as myself in this company, and you start sharing your experience and you start telling your story, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, the call is coming from inside the house. I learned how to tell my story. From being an MLM, I'm telling my story to prevent people from joining multi-level marketing companies instead of trying to get them to sign up in multi-level marketing like I used to or sell them an overpriced product. So it's interesting how they don't like it. They don't like it. So if you've been a part of a, a multi-level marketing company or you have experience with somebody, tell your story. Let's just follow Lisa's advice. Tell your story. In whatever way you want to. Tag me in it. I'll share it out. <laughs> I can find Weird. myself in one of those stories. So we've gone full circle, right? We've gone full circle. So if you're a brand new, or if you're starting again, or if you've been doing this for 10 years and you need the reminder, make sure that you are fully plugged in to the community and all of the community's assets and wonderful things. People, you know, one of the main reasons people quit this is because they're not fully plugged in. Mm. It's one of them. Is that why, Lisa? Or do people quit because they're treated poorly? Or do people quit because they're taken advantage of, whether that's financially or otherwise? Do people quit because they're not making any money? Do people quit because they start to realize that the chaos is, is just them, the company, the upline, trying to prevent them from asking questions? Do people quit because they start critically thinking for themselves? Because I bet they do. I bet people go, you know, I don't know why I'm doing all of this and I'm spending all of this every month. I'm buying all the new products. I'm going to the events. What am I actually getting out of this? And then they do a profit and loss statement and realize that they've been paying to be a part of the company to say that they're a distributor or a promoter with Prove It while their upline gets paid and goes on these lavish, you know, vacations. You going to Cabo with us again? Michael Rutherford, I'm talking to you. You know, it's wild to me. It's wild. It's manipulative. You're taking advantage of other people. That's not okay. People don't quit just because they're not plugged in. People quit for so many reasons. And shout out to you guys that got out of an MLM. Whether you're speaking up or not, that's okay. You got out, you did the right thing, or you found that, you know, your favorite content creator or whatnot. 
you found the information, you decided not to join, shout out to you guys. It's important, you know? So fully plug in. Another reason people quit is they never fully commit to mm. the vision of what they're creating or they I think what you're trying to say is they never fully commit to the uh, sunk cost fallacy. Listen, just commit to this for six months, a year, two years, three years. Imagine where you'll be in five years. Yeah, you'll be bankrupt. You won't have any money because you're spending it on product. And the income disclosure statement from Prove It shows us that. They never created the vision in the first place. Mm. So create the vision for your life. What do you want your life to look like in a year? And it's not just a paycheck. This is the vehicle. Yeah, but most people aren't even getting a paycheck, Lisa, in Prove It. And if you were aware of the income disclosure statement, you would know that. But you, you know, make it sound like, oh, I just, I try not to know everything. Well, maybe start with the income disclosure statement. Because what you're saying is not correct. And that information comes directly from Prove It. What does it look like? Is it more time with your kids? Is it more leisure time? Is it None of which you're going to get in Prove It. Because the higher you if, you, if you are somebody that moves up the ranks, you have less and less time freedom. It's a complete flip-flop. These people talk about, that are in an MLM, they talk about time freedom, but you see them working all the time from everywhere. That's not time freedom. They're, they say, and they'll bring try to bring people in by saying, listen, time freedom, you can work in the cracks of your day. But what really ends up happening is as you move up the ranks, you live your life in the cracks of your day. The MLM takes over everything, whether it's leadership Zooms, team Zooms, planning campaigns, planning events, you know, reaching out to team members. It takes over everything so that the time with your kid, the time on the on the couch or just doing whatever it is that you want to do becomes what you do in the crack of your day. And then you end up feeling guilty for sitting on the couch or, you know, hanging out with your kids because you should be working. That's really what happens. Is it more authentic relationships? Is it having the time to have the time? Is it doing something charitable? Fine, commit to your vision fully. Fully plug in. The third reason people will quit is because they spend more time both in and out of their business with cynics than with skeptics. I have no problem with a skeptic. People should be skeptical. Skeptical just means they want, they don't want to, they don't just want a story. They want to see the substance behind the story, not a problem. No, they don't, they don't want to see the substance behind the story. They want to see the facts. They want to see the data and MLMers people, well, people in MLMs and MLM companies, in my opinion, are, they're not making that readily available. That's why the anti MLM movement, I feel like provides all of this data, whether it's from the FTC or these companies own income disclosure statements, because it has to get out there so that people don't join. Because if that was being disclosed before recruiting them, hey, you know, the average is, you know, under $11 of income for the year. That's that that's what people made in 2022. I just want you to be aware nobody would join. They don't want to know all the details of the story. They want to know, okay, you're saying I could come into this company and I can make money. You're saying that I can work when I want to, that I can be my own boss. You're saying that I'll have time freedom. You're saying that I can retire my spouse. You're saying that I can do X, Y, and Z. All right, show me. Where in the data does it, does that, is that shown? Oh, it's not? Cool. You know? It's just, it's gross. It's grimy. Stacy, member for 12 months. Thank you so much. MLM doesn't allow you to be more present. You can work from anywhere, but you end up working from everywhere. Exactly. Exactly. We can show, we have it all. Uh, we have it all here. We don't have though. to hype or lie about. It's not like seven years ago when the company started and people had to talk about what was going to happen. Oh, so you hyped and lied about it seven years ago? But you don't have to do that now. That's interesting. We have seven year track record of all the stuff that has. So there's nothing indeed. wrong with a skeptic. We do indeed have a track record. We do in indeed have a collection of stories that one day may come out. Yeah. And will I shout it from the rooftops? Indeed, I will. Skepticism is healthy. 
But cynicism, you'll never make a cynic happy. They're looking. They're not looking for reasons to make it work. They're looking for reasons to prove it doesn't. Don't wait. Oh, this is her version of don't listen to the haters. Yeah. Don't listen to the haters, guys. They're just jealous. Waste your time there. Don't I'm waste good. time there. So spend time with the skeptics, not mm. the cynics. Mm -hmm. Another reason people quit is they don't play the full game. You got to play for four quarters. And in this. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, could that be considered a sunk cost fallacy? Oh, you just didn't stick around long enough. You, you know, you only stuck around for three and a half years. You should have stuck around for seven. You know, play the long game. Come on. Space. That's to me about two years. That doesn't mean that you won't have success right away. Any interaction is success. If you focus on appreciation, any person who is willing not. to go through the process with you, any person who allows you to share your story with them, who shares their story with you, they have they are a hero in your story. Whatever. Wait, so me sharing my experience makes me a hero in your story, Lisa? Or does it only apply when it benefits you financially? Is it only positive, you know, pro-prove-it stories? Or is it everybody's story? Because I feel like everybody's story is important. But just with this tr training that you're doing, I'm just, I have questions, you know? Or they decide to do. Because you know what I know? I know that when you've told your story a hundred times, even if every single one of those hundred people says no to everything you are offering, that you are going to tell, you are now an expert at telling your story. And I know what will happen with the next hundred. And I mean, no, because if you've told your story a hundred times and the reason you're telling your story is to sell them on Prove It Ketones or becoming a promoter and every one of them says no, then that's not successful. That's, that's not successful at all. That doesn't make them an expert. I feel like if we're talking about sales, if you start getting better about talking about your product, I'm not saying MLMs, I'm talking about just general sales. If you know your product and you're talking about it and you're able to pitch it to people that are looking for something like that, that are not random people on social media, you know, that whatever, or they're going through whatever. And you're able to get better and better at closing. Then you're becoming an expert because your closing ratio, your conversion ratio is going to get better and better. But if you're telling, if you're telling your story and a hundred people are telling, you no, all of them, that that's not an expert at all. The next hundred after that. Anytime somebody sits down and it gives you the opportunity Summer, to be better up? through the art of repetition that is willing to have a conversation with you that allows you to learn more about other people and helps you to improve your ability to listen, they are a hero in your story. And they may say no today. They may say no for the rest of your eternity, for the rest of your life, but they may be saying not yet. They may be saying, let me. I miss your face, Summer. See what you do. They may be saying my timing is off, but if you're in a good relationship with them, that hero, you can always continue the conversation and you never know what tomorrow will bring. Here's the thing. The owners approve it. I know them both well. I knew about the company mm. before it began. I knew about the product when they launched it. Mm. The initial product was not the product we have today. It worked. It didn't taste so good. Yeah, they used to send it to people they wanted to try the products in little Ziploc baggies. Not labeled. And I'm like, yeah, that tracks. <laughs> I can be honest about that. It didn't taste good at all. This is amazing. But I bet you said it tasted good back then. I bet you said orange creamsicle, orange dream tasted dreamy. I bet you did. <laughs> Oh. We are a technology company, not a product company. The product no, you're a supplement MLM. You're not a you're not a technology company. You're not. 
I was trying to think of an example and I'm looking around like you're not making remotes for LED lights or whatever. <laughs> you're not a technology company. You're selling ketones. It is a supplement that is terrible in my opinion for so many reasons. You're not a technology company. The products we're drinking today are not the products we'll be drinking in a few years and certainly not the products we were drinking at the beginning because we are always getting better every single time. But I've known them for 20, 31 years, one of them, 15 years, another. Yes, Prove it was two, over two years old when I said yes. Do you know how many times that me I said no? That I mean, how many in two years? I don't, I don't know. Why is that relevant? I don't, I don't understand. Also, this pause story is unfortunate, but funny. And the reason I'm saying that is because I can only imagine with my facial expressions, some of the pause stories y'all see. <laughs> the time, it wasn't the right time. But the story Ooh, kept salted being caramel. truer and getting better. And here I am. You never. Summer, if you're still on here, do you remember the, do you remember the salted caramel bone broth? Oh, God, it's terrible. Ever know, and you have no control mm. over it. So your job is to offer people every single day the chance to make a change, to make a difference <laughs> in their lives and the lives of the people that they know, love, and care about. Your job every day is to go out and be an interested, compassionate, empathetic human, and to look for those that are looking for the change, to help those that want the help, to guide those that are willing to be guided. It is not to get anybody to do anything anymore Relatable. that you want to be gotten to do anything. So take the pressure off. Commit for four quarters. You can have success. You had to commit for four quarters. Why? So they can make under $11 for the year based on their income disclosure statement. Such a good strategy, Lisa. But you get paid every time your downline orders the new products, right? Yeah. Did y'all know that they're doing like a, a ketone bowl, like the Super Bowl on Sunday? They're, they're doing a ketone bowl. I imagine they're probably going to bring back uh, flavors, but they're going to rebrand them. Why do they rebrand them, in my opinion? Because then all the distributors buy it because they think it's a new, a new flavor. But then you get it and you drink it and you're like, hang on a second. This tastes really familiar and you start talking quietly amongst each other and you're like you guys remember this kind of reminds me of uh you know an old flavor that they had years ago and then you're like hang on a second this tastes exactly like that and you're like but it's called something else and they have a new label on it so people think it's a new flavor the distributors are the customers i know that firsthand because i was in this company so it's interesting how all of that works isn't it very manipulative very, very manipulative. Success the day you said, <laughs> yes, I'll look. Because you demonstrated an openness that many people don't. And that makes you better equipped to face tomorrow. You had success the day that you started drinking ketones and kept drinking them. Look at where you are today versus then. Look at how you feel today versus then. You had success the first time you helped one person make their life better because they're drinking ketones today and wouldn't have if not for you. You had success every time you talk to another person regardless with respect and, 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 and compassion and empathy and took them through the process, whatever they said. But playing full out for, for, oh for four God. quarters is two years. And I had great... <laughs> is that how you're defining it? So if anybody was in Prove It and didn't stay full the full two years, they were not playing full out. They weren't in it for the long game. So their story doesn't matter. Is that what you're saying, Lisa? Because I think that their story matters. Whether they were in for two days, two weeks, two months, two years, whatever, I think that their story matters. Success in Prove It initially, and it was about at the two-year mark that I had a what I would call a solid business. And at the five-year mark, five and a half years now, where I had a solid enough business that it could weather a pandemic and it could weather changes in the marketplace and it could weather all the anger and
Lisa, let's be for real now. The only reason that it weathered anything is because the entire empire was under you, because Jesse Lee was under you. That's the only reason that your business weathered. Also, didn't your husband get like those loans? That's weird. Anyways, that's the only reason your business weathered this is because of the people that were in the empire that are under you or were under you. That's so weird. And uncertainty that is outside the community of Prove It, begging to get in as we set boundaries against it and invite people in to escape it and pursue something better. So commit to the vision you're creating. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, play full out. Play for four quarters. Spend your time. When does four quarters equal two years, though? Because four quarters would be one year. So I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> with, the, with the skeptics, but not the cynics. So are we, Lisa, are we considered skeptics or cynics? Because a skeptic is asking for more information, is asking to be shown the parts of the story, according to you. I'm saying show people the actual information, show people the income disclosure statement, show people all of that. So does that make me a skeptic or a cynic? Just kind of curious. And have converse commit to the process. Fully plug into everything. Know the map. You don't have to know how to run the train, drive the car, fly the plane, or all of the best restaurants to eat in the map. Know the map so that you can point, guide, and direct people to the places on the map to help them get the information that they need to make them, to make their best decision for themselves. Be there to get them to the place. Be there as they go through it. Be there when they get out and help guide them to the next and to have a conversation with a non-judgmental. Summer stuff. <laughs> For their best interests, which in turn turns out to be your best interests at heart. Be consistent. You missed it. I don't know if you were here, Summer, when she was talking earlier about she knows how to turn Brian on. And Katie. And I don't remember who else she mentioned, but. Mm. Aaron, please read my comment about my about the new flavor. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm scrolling. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Then they can say, attention, old flavor lovers. We have a new flavor coming out that will remind you of, name the flavor. Make sure you snag yours to feed your nostalgia. Also, don't forget, get a box of caffeinated and caffeine-free because you'll never know what your customers would want. Yeah, or will want. Yeah. Consistently, oh because he who has the most conversations always always wins and that's about everything i've got for my saturday morning rant but i see that we have a few minutes left so if anybody has a question that is on point with anything i said anything that wasn't clear um none of it was clear lisa i mean the manipulation was but i don't think anybody wrote anything down feel free to ask it in the chat and, and i will try to answer it and if not i want to tell everybody that um, your time is so valuable. I want to thank you for spending some of it. With yeah, their time is valuable and you wasted it. With me, whether you were here live this Saturday morning or whether you're watching this on replay, uh, being a part of this community has been one of the greater joys of my life and having mm. the privilege of being able to speak to the community is one of the greater honors. So I love each and every one of you. Lisa, you don't know them. You don't know everybody in the community to say that you love them. You don't know them. That's weird. Um, I want you all to have your next chapter to be your best chapter. Tomorrow to be better than yesterday. Oh, God, no. I do remember when we went to the Prove It event here in Las Vegas at the Red Rock Casino. And 
I remember her handing me a bag. It was when Blue Ocean came out. She handed me a bag of this blue these Blue Ocean ketones, and she's like, "Here, take these." And I was like, "What?" And it was the it was a new flavor, and it was the um, black label, so it had more ketones and more caffeine in them. And uh, yeah, just handed them the giant bag to me, and I was like, "Oh, okay, all right. What am I supposed to do with these?" And she's like, "I don't know. Just drink them. Whatever." Yeah, weird. Weird. Floor to ceiling cabinet full of product. And then boxes spread on her dining room table. I wonder how many of them are expired. Does she give the expired ones to people like Courtney and Brittany Anderson do? And probably other people. I just know of those two doing them. Because that's not right. That's not right. Brittany... That's not right. Courtney, I know you know better. Stop it. Today, and I want you not to be selfish with that and be <gasps> willing to not care enough what other people think so that you can love them enough to offer them an opportunity for something that could change your lives. And we Never have I ever heard something more manipulative than what she just said. Don't be selfish. What we have here can save life. I mean, can help people because that's what she started to say at the beginning. <laughs> Unbelievable. With that, I'm going to say have a great Saturday and I will see you the next time we all get together. Bye, Gabri Goodbye, Lisa. Goodbye. Good God. Well, that was, that was something, wasn't it? Are you guys good? <laughs> oh, man. That was something. But that's Lisa Grossman. I was having a conversation, may have been with the members or it may have been, I don't remember if it was with somebody, private message or whatever. But as I, <clears throat> as I talk about some of this, the, some of these people or, or somebody else's video, it reminds me of all the people that I do know, which one of the members did give me the idea to do MLM introduction and talk about, you know, people that I know that I've spent time with when I was in multi-level marketing, Lisa Grossman is one of them. So I'm going to, as I find different pieces of content that they have put out, I'm going to do more of these kind of MLM introductions to people that I have firsthand experience with um, and, and, and sharing their manipulative ways, I guess is the best way to say that. So this is the first one. I'll periodically put out a live stream like this where we're meeting some new people in multi-level marketing and I can share my experience with them. I've thought about doing one on Matt Rosa, Jason Brown from what used to be I Am Academy. Summer, stop it. I know exactly. <laughs> I know you are laughing and I know what story you are laughing at. Stop it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's going to be more to come because honestly, there's been there were so many people that I met over 13 and a half years while I was in multi-level marketing and I forget sometimes, you know? And so I think that for me, it's, I think that this could be helpful to people, you know, anyways, <laughs> summer. <laughs> anyways, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you so much. Do not join prove it. Do not join prove it. And if you have somebody that's in your inbox asking if you're happy, block, block. That's, that's not okay. It's none of their business to ask if you're happy. And drinking ketones is not a solution for that. Because if it actually put people in a better mood, we wouldn't see some of the snarky stories like Cheryl Pike losing her mind over things in her stories amongst many other people. If it was in a, if, if it put people in a better mood, we wouldn't see some of the, uh, the anger, if you will, in my opinion, from them, you know, drink your ketones then put you in a better mood, right? I don't understand. Just kidding. Don't drink ketones. Also, heads up. I am getting ready. I'm going to I'm going to talk about this on the next few live streams and uh I am going to have more ketones tested if you would like to participate in that, just keep an eye out for that. Um and again, I want to have keto up, keto kick, keto chill, the new electrolytes, and what was the other one? There was another product that I that I would like to have tested. So four or five of the newer products uh, for heavy metals specifically. And um, I will make, it's going to be a big thing just like last time. So um, I'm going to work with some of the other creators and we can see if there's a way that we can 
figure out, you know, how we can do like a fundraiser kind of thing because it is Radline. Thank you, Julie. Because I do want to make these results available for everybody. And then there will be another step coming in the next few months. So very excited about that. Thank you for being here. If you have not already liked the stream, if you would do that, that would be amazing. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. It's the free, easy way for you to help me get the information out that people should not join these manipulative companies where they're going to lose money, lose themselves, lose friendships and time. Don't do that. Okay. All right. Appreciate you. I mean, subscribe, but don't join the MLM. That's what I meant. All right. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one, everybody.